Fidelio was written in a revolutionary time. Um, Beethoven wrote it for a performance where I think occupying forces were the people who first saw the piece. That context is a very specific context and of course it would be possible for us to make a production there or you could imagine Fidelio in many other specific contexts. I could imagine a production in Guantanamo Bay. I could imagine a production in South Africa. There are many, many specific times and places this piece resonates, but of course it's also a much more universal piece about freedom, the need for freedom, about the dehumanizing effects of taking freedom away, about how we must never give up hope that we can affect change, that uh, we can make a difference in the world. You know, Leonora is a great hero at making change happen. We really wanted to explore the dehumanizing effect of the loss of freedom and how that dehumanizing effect is felt not only by the prisoner, but also by the person doing the imprisoning. In Fidelio, there are really three different communities on stage. There are the prisoners, like Florestan. There are the families of the imprisoned, the families waiting outside at the gates for news of their loved ones. Leonora, of course, is one of, one of the people in that group who goes to rescue her husband. And then there's the community of people who work in the prison, who work in the prison system. I think the piece explores how all of those groups have their identities taken away from them, have their humanity reduced through, um, through the effects of, of the loss of freedom. Another theme which we wanted to explore was the journey from darkness to light in the piece. This is a piece of extremes. It's a piece on the one hand where it feels as if Florestan is stuck in the deepest, darkest place, a place with absolutely no light. Um, he begins, uh, the first thing we hear him sing out of the darkness is Gott welch dunkel hier. It is so dark here and yet the piece also takes us to extraordinarily blinding white light, uh, the white light of hope. And, you know, Beethoven's climax to the opera, which is uh, hysterically in love with freedom. It's sort of bubbling over with joy and excitement about the possibilities of change, the possibilities of um, revolution. That feels like it is blindingly bright light. The rhythmic element in Beethoven is so important and this we find as well in Fidelio. We have so many offbeats, you know, where, where uh, it's not jazz, of course not, but Beethoven was always in many pieces kind of ahead of his time. And what's really important for me and in Beethoven's music that it's every note talks about humanity. Every note talks about freedom, about justice, about love. We can breathe with this music. We are kind of liberated with this music. Then suddenly Pizarro enters and we have this dramatic world of Pizarro, this dark world, this injustice, this manipulation. Yes, and Beethoven chooses, for example, D minor. D minor is always a very dark key. I'm sure Beethoven chose this key to show this abyss where we are now looking. <laughs> Thank you. 
co ważne jest przy wykonaniu tej opery, jest użycie warsztatu śpiewaka, tak aby być jak najbardziej punktualnym z orkiestrą. Jest to bardzo, bardzo instrumentalna muzyka, która polega na tym, że jest bardzo mało zwolnień i przyspieszeń ritenu to rubato. Tutaj Kondensacja muzyki instrumentalnej jest, jest również dla głosu jest bardzo silna. It is a piece which has lots of different genres in it. So it moves from a light domestic drama, kind of a singspiel type music, into a romantic rescue opera, and finally ending up almost in the land of oratorio. And, you know, as a director, I think you have to be willing to engage with those, those different types of music, those different forms, um, and also tie the whole thing together. One of the challenges is perhaps that some of those forms demand stillness. They demand simplicity on stage. And both as audiences, as performers, as directors, we're so used to, to rapid rhythms from film. We're so used to to the energy of cutting, of new ideas constantly coming at us. And actually, Beethoven wants a different rhythm. He, he wants moments of stillness, of reflection. And we have to be brave enough to, to create those on stage. Here, in this production, in the very end, she sees that she actually got to free her husband. And this, this is, of course, fantastic. But on the other hand, it's also, she also sees that she was actually too late because uh, he is no longer her husband. She will never get this husband back. He is so ruined, destroyed, and she sees that. But she also finds that she has achieved to free him and, and this is of course the, the best for her and she decides that she will go on trying to be powerful and strong and to go on fighting for, for all the weak people which her, her husband did always. He was an activist and this is the very end of the opera where she decides to, to continue his work. <laughs>